All right, so now we're down to pretty much the heart of what logic does, which is to evaluate arguments for validity. Validity is a property which good arguments have, which says that the premises cannot all be true and the conclusion false. And that doesn't matter what's actually going on in the world or how the world is or even how the world might have turned out. There's just no way that the premises can all be true and the conclusion false. So whether or not the premises are actually true, again, that's not something that logic can evaluate, but logic can tell you that if the premises are true, then the conclusion of the argument cannot be false. So let's take a look at this argument that's here in standard form. This is a pretty simple and straightforward argument that I think you can see right away is valid. It says if P, or, or sorry, it says P R Q, if P then R, if Q then R, therefore R. This could symbolize some kind of English language argument, a really simple one, like Casey has a cat or Casey has a dog. If Casey has a cat, Casey has a mammal. If Casey has a dog, Casey has a mammal. Therefore, Casey has a mammal. Okay? Now, saying that this argument is valid is the same as saying that this set of sentences, which are all the premises together, entails, this is an entailment symbol, entails the conclusion, right? And again, that means that there's no way that this set of sentences can all be true and this sentence false. And again, that's equivalent to saying that we could take, if we take this R and we put a negation sign on it and add it to this set, then the resulting set is inconsistent. There's no, no truth value assignment is going to make all of that true. So let's go ahead and look at how to evaluate this with a truth table. I think you'll find that this is a really easy concept because you already know kind of how to do truth tables. And this is just a question of knowing what to check. So think of this as being like a hunt for a counterexample. A counterexample is a truth value assignment or a row on the truth table that's going to make all of our premises true and our conclusion false. And that kind of really narrows down what it is that you have to look for. And so there's really not that much checking involved normally. So I've gone ahead and I made this truth table and I put a vertical line here <coughs> to separate R and to show that R is the conclusion. So it's kind of off separated by itself. So the first thing that we want to do is find the lines that are going to make the conclusion false. Because remember, a counterexample is a row that makes all the premises true and the conclusion false. So any row where the conclusion is true, we don't need to worry about it. We don't have to do any check in there at all. So R, I can just look over here and get the values of R, right? So I'm reading those directly off of this column. And again, any row where R is true, we don't need to check because that's not going to be a counterexample. It's not going to be a row making all the premises true and the conclusion false. So I like to do that, I like to draw like a line through them or kind of sc scratch them out lightly to show that I don't need to worry about them anymore. That's up to you if you want to do that. You can, other, you can just leave it blank, you could fill it out if you're more comfortable just doing the whole table. It's up to you what you want to do as long as you're systematic about it. So <clears throat> let's just go ahead and check the rest of these lines where R is false, where the conclusion is false and see if any of them are a counterexample. So here we have the first premise is P R Q. Look, P is true and Q is true. That makes P R Q true. What about if P then R or P conditional R? Well, look, P is true, R is false. That makes that line false because we have um, 
a true antecedent and a false consequence. So the conditional is false. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that to show that we don't need, to, you know, to show that one of the premises is false. We don't need to mess with that row anymore. You can do that, or you can scratch it out too. You know, it's up to you what you want to do. It kind of depends on whether you need to show this table to somebody else's evidence for your reasoning or not, if it's whether it's just for you to look at or whether it's for somebody else to look at. So uh, how about here? Well, P is true, so PRQ is true. Uh, but again, P is true and R is false. So again, this conditional is false. So we're done with that row. That row is also not going to be a counterexample. One of the premises is false, so it's not going to be a row showing all the premises can be true and the conclusion false. How about here? Q is true, so again, P or Q is true. Look, P is false, and that automatically makes this conditional true, because the conditional is true wherever the antecedent is false. Now, how about here? Q, therefore, R. Well, Q is true, and R is false. So, again, we have a false premise. This row is not going to be a counterexample either. What about this last row? P or Q is, are both false, and so... This is, this is false, that premise is false, and again, we don't have a counterexample. So we've shown that there's no model, there's no truth value assignment, no way that the world could be that's going to make these sentences true and this conclusion false. So these sentences, the truth functionally entail are, and so this is a valid argument. Remember, the premises entail the conclusion is the same. It's equivalent to saying that the argument is valid. And we've shown that this is, in fact, a valid argument.